book was something that was a traveler's guide. It was necessary for African Americans as many offered sites for food, friendly places to go for entertainment during a time when much of the South was segregated. But for others, this book was so important. It was the key to survival. Here's Kaylin Hagwood to tell us more. Imagine hopping in your car, your sights set on a restaurant or maybe a place to stay. These activities, while mundane for some, just decades ago could strike fear in the hearts of many African-American travelers, hoping to arrive safely in a nation segregated. This is the story of some of the locations and people in Colombia who offered a safe space in the book that brought many of them together, starting on Hardin Street. These are kind of the last remaining buildings to, to a certain extent of uh, what would have been a segregated black business district uh, here in the city. It was here, across from Allen University, where African Americans could sleep, eat, and play. The location marked in the Green Book, a traveler's guide for blacks during segregation. What they were very skilled at was pinpointing specific businesses that would drop you right into the heart of the segregated business districts that existed across the South. The book, created by Victor Green, included sites nationwide. This Hardin Street location was formerly the Cozy Inn restaurant. Also in Columbia, Motel Simbeth. It's since been destroyed. Its owner, Majeska Simpkins, lived on Marion Street. Her home, now also a piece of history. Martin Luther King stayed there. Um, also, a lot of black entertainers that came and performed at the Township Auditorium. But it's where the Green Book sites weren't listed that often brought the biggest uncertainty, with some carrying gas and several days worth of food in case they couldn't stop. Do I try to stop at this gas station and get gas? And do I need to be afraid for my family or do we just keep driving? Today, many of the sites are no longer standing. For those that do remain. It's important to continue to recognize these faces because uh, the ones that remain tell a powerful story of survival, community development, uh, and uh, our collective ability to overcome some of the prejudices that existed during Jim Crow. As for the book, the sights and stories live on in history in Columbia and beyond. Reporting in Columbia, I'm Kaylin Hagwood.